Hello and welcome back to another video. My name is Mike Davies and in today's tutorial I'll be showing you how to use the search actions feature in GIMP. This is also known as the integrated search feature. I'll be using GIMP version 2.10.24 which is the latest version of GIMP at the time of this tutorial. Before I get into that, check out DaviesMediaDesign.com. As always, I have tons of video tutorials on here and free software help articles, so definitely check that out. You can get more content by becoming a DMD Premium member, and you can enroll in my GIMP 2.10 Masterclass from Beginner to Pro Photo Editing, and I'll include a link to this as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. I'll be using this free photos from Pexels for today's tutorial. It says Pixabay there. Just click the free download arrow here and go with large, click free download. So the search actions feature is a quick and easy way to find pretty much anything in GIMP. It can be used to open up images, filters, effects, tools, and pretty much any menu item you would find inside of GIMP. So basically, instead of having to know where everything is located inside of GIMP's menus or inside of any of the dialogues in GIMP, you can simply just bring up the search actions feature, type anything in, and then click on that action or click on that feature in order to open it up. So let me show you what I'm talking about here. I have GIMP opened up and I don't have a composition open. In order to open this feature, I can go to help, search and run a command. I can also use the shortcut key, which is the forward slash key. So I'll click on here to open this up. The first thing I wanna know is that this will work when you do not have a composition opened up in GIMP. However, it's only going to display the features that make sense for somebody who does not have a composition opened up. In other words, it's not going to display based on certain features or actions that wouldn't work if you didn't have an image opened in the GIMP. So for example, if I wanted to open a new blank document, I could type new, and here you'll see it says new and create a new image. The shortcut key for that is control N. Also, any other feature that has the word new in it, either in the description or the name, is gonna show up here. So as you can see, Unsharp Mask isn't creating anything new, but it says make a new image from the current layer by applying the Unsharp Mask method. So if the word new is in the description, it'll show up here. Or I can open up an existing image that I've opened in the past by typing document. And here you'll see we have the option document history. One thing you'll notice is that this is not case sensitive, so the fact that I typed document lowercase did not matter. Also, if I only type a portion of this, it'll still show up, so you don't always need to type the full name or the full words. So in this case, let's double click on here, and that's gonna open up my document history over on the right side. Of course, you can always access your document history by going to File, Open Recent, and choosing Document History. But if you want to save time or if you forget where it's located, you can just use the search actions feature there. So I'm just going to open up a couple of documents from here. The first one is going to be this GIMP Wilbur Vector logo. So I'm going to double click on here to open it up. And now we've opened that composition up. I also want to open up this photo that I opened earlier, so I'll double click on that as well. And I'll come over here and just convert this to GIMP's native color space. So that's just one example of how the search actions feature can be used. Let me demonstrate another example, which is opening and using a filter in GIMP on your image. So let's say for example, I wanted to add a vignette to this. Let me first come over here, create a new layer in our composition, and I'm just gonna name this vignette. Keep all the other settings the same, make sure this is filled with transparency and click okay. And now if I hit the forward slash key on my keyboard, that'll bring up the search actions feature and I'll type vignette. Again, you don't have to type the full thing, but here you'll see we have a result that is our vignette geggle filter. So I'm gonna double click on here. That's gonna open up the vignette filter. Of course, I can make adjustments here using the on canvas controls. I'm not gonna go through the vignette filter right now, but once you're ready, come over here and click okay. And now we have a vignette applied to this. This feature is not constrained to effects. You can also use it to grab a tool from your toolbox or to perform a transformation, for example. So let's say I wanted to scale this image down. I can use the forward slash key and type scale. And you'll see a variety of options here for scaling. So you could scale your image, which is the main image here. You can grab the scale tool from your toolbox, which of course you can also just grab by clicking on here or you can scale an individual layer or use any of these Geggle filters that have something to do with scaling. So you have tons of options to choose from here, but I'm just gonna go with the scale image option. 
So I'll double click on here. That's gonna scale the entire image composition, including all of the layers in here. So let's say I wanted to scale this down. Let's go 1280. And because I have the little chain link icon linked here, I'm gonna hit the tab key and that will automatically adjust my height so that this has the same aspect ratio as my original image. I'll change the interpolation to no halo. I do have an entire tutorial on how to scale images with minimal quality loss where I discuss the interpolation modes here or the interpolation methods. I'll link that to this video, but once I'm ready, I'm gonna come over here and hit scale. So there's another application of this search actions feature. Let me bring up the feature again. What we can also do is we can search for existing compositions inside of our current session. So let's say we have like 50 different compositions opened up in the GIMP. Right now, of course, we only have two, but let's just say hypothetically we had a bunch and we were having trouble locating one of our compositions. Well, all I have to do is type the name of that composition and that will allow me to find that composition here in the search actions dialog. So for example, I know that one of my compositions is named Wilbur. So if I start to type Wilbur, you'll see right here is gonna be the composition we currently have opened up in GIMP, this tab right here. You can also see the shortcut key for accessing that tab. So because that's the first tab, we can use Alt-1 to access it. And you'll also see that another result is showing up here. This is the document history result. So this is basically saying we could open this up from our computer because we opened it earlier. And control two just means it's the second entry in our document history. We don't wanna open this up again from our computer. So I will double click on this first option here. And that's gonna take us right here to the Wilbur composition. And of course, let me hit alt two. That'll go to the second tab there. Alt one brings us back as it showed there in the search actions dialog. Let me hit the forward slash key. One last thing I wanna demonstrate is you can toggle certain things on from the menus. So let's say I wanted to toggle the grid on here. I can type grid and you've got some options here. So you can draw a grid using this legacy feature or you could simply show the grid that GIMP automatically draws on every image. And as you can see here, you can also turn snapping on and what this little red icon here means, it looks like a little record button, but actually it just means that this feature is currently turned off. So that means that in the menus, this is gonna be a checkbox. And actually we can see this by going to view, show grid. So you can see here, it's got a red circle and over here it is unchecked. So let me just double click on this. That's gonna show our grid. And now when I go to view, show grid, you'll see it's checked here. And let me click out of there, forward slash. If I type grid now, you'll see instead of showing a red circle, now it's gonna show like a green check mark. So that just tells me that this is turned on. And if I wanted to turn it off, I could double click on it again and that will hide that. So basically anytime you want to perform a certain action inside of GIMP or you wanna find a certain feature or filter in GIMP, you can use the search actions feature and that way you don't have to know where every single thing is located in GIMP. You can simply type a keyword. It's gonna show up inside of the search actions results and then double click on that result that you wanna use. And essentially it'll apply that action or open up the relevant dialog box for whatever feature it is you were searching for. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you liked it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon to be notified each time I have a brand new tutorial. You can check out any of the links to my resources in the description of the video, but thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.